Hi, it's Wayne Bell with Log Home Care. Welcome back to our series, You Asked, We Answered. In the spring, our telephone lines light up. Many of the calls involve carpenter bees. We see the map of carpenter bees moving north from the southern states up through the Midwest, typically beginning about March or April, extending into June and sometimes July. In fact, some years there's actually two hatches of carpenter bees. So there'll be a wave of activity in the spring and a second wave in late summer. Let's talk about the carpenter bee. It looks much like a yellow jacket. If you've had a log home and you see pinky sized holes on the wood, many times in the dimensional lumber of the fascias and soffits, it's a high probability that you have a carpenter bee issue. Don't worry about it, it's not a structural concern, but let's talk about how we get rid of the carpenter bee problem. Carpenter bees are an inherently lazy creature. They return to the same nesting sites and reuse the same holes every year. Let's discuss how that's dealt with. The first step is to take a wire, insert it into the hole, and disrupt any chambering activity that's currently underway. Now this sounds abusive, but this is, we're not talking about bumblebees or honeybees, we're talking about carpenter bees. It's interesting that carpenter bees generally will not sting you. The female is in fact the only one that's capable of stinging. The males, however, are the ones that get in your face and hover trying to chase you away from the nesting site. Then we apply some type of contact insecticide. Most professionals prefer to use a powdered insecticide because it doesn't soak into the wood, but some people use a liquid product. Most importantly, once the hole is cleaned out with a wire, and treated to kill any activity that's inside, we then have to seal up the entry point. All the major log home sealant product manufacturers make some type of sealant, caulk-like product in the tube, most often in multiple colors. They're all made and engineered to stick to wood. Simply caulk the hole closed and you don't have to fill the entire cavity, just the last half inch. Wipe off the excess and move on. This prevents the carpenter bee activity from occurring in the first place because we've disrupted any activity in the hole. And secondarily, returning bees cannot reuse the space. A bigger concern with carpenter bees is that woodpeckers love to eat the carpenter bee larva. This looks like someone in a weekend has taken a router to your home and done tremendous damage as they chisel out these tunnels to eat the larva. So if you have woodpecker damage, the same elastomeric product that seals the hole can be used to spackle those areas closed and tooled flush and made to fill in. Again, if we address the carpenter bee, the woodpeckers have no reason to bother your house. Now there are some other things that may or may not serve your purposes. Some people have great success using carpenter bee traps. Carpenter bee traps generally feature a wood material with holes drilled in it to simulate carpenter bee hole activity and a retaining device, a mason jar or a clear pop bottle or some retaining container to, to hold the bees and prevent them from escaping. Some people have good success with them, some people don't. I've actually seen carpenter bee traps work in one location and three feet away another one just doesn't work. So we're not sure why. If your carpenter bee trap is successfully working, and you empty the chamber, it's important to leave some of the dead bodies in there because it's believed they release a pheromone that acts as an attractant to other bees. Now getting ahead of the carpenter bee problem, once we've resolved the existing damage, and we may or may not want to try to trap additional bees, there are additives that can go into the various finished products that are contact insecticide. They attack the central nervous system of the carpenter bee by being absorbed through the pads in their feet. Depending on the product, uh, that you're placing on your home, the manufacturer's recommendation, the chemical base of the kinds of stains and top coats you're using, there are various additives that may be of service to perform that purpose. We carpenter bee treat virtually every home that we refinish. We don't charge for it, it's just a service that we provide. So taking care of the existing damage, possibly preventing it through traps and other apparatus of that nature, and then when it is time to refinish, making certain that we put the right finishes on to repel the carpenter bees and prevent them from nesting in your home. Until then, keep a tennis racket on your front porch because you can hit those slow-moving suckers and that's great sport. Thank you for checking out Log Home Care.